hi dear students hope you all listened to the previous video uh, wherein we discussed what is documentary the history of documentary and we also took inputs about the director of the documentary prescribed for your study and that is peter davis so today we'll move on to the documentary that is prescribed to you and that is nelson mandela prisoner to president so from the title itself it is evident that this documentary is about nelson mandela so who is nelson mandela all of us are aware of this great man of this great leader uh, in history but then again as he is the subject of our documentary let's have a quick look at the biography of nelson mandela nelson mandela was a civil rights leader in south africa and he fought against apartheid now what is apartheid apartheid is a system where the whites and blacks were separated and they did not have equal rights so this was a system that was there in south africa that separated people based on their race and skin color and during this apartheid there were laws that forced white people and black people to live and work apart from each other and even though there were less white people in south africa these apartheid laws allowed or gave the domination to white people they were given the right to rule the country and enforce the laws now this started or this system called apartheid started in south africa when the national party won the election in 1948 okay and they declared that certain regions in south africa are white only and certain other regions are black only that means white people were allowed to uh, stay in some regions and the black people were allowed to stay in some other regions so many people protested against this system called apartheid from the start but these people were labeled as communists and they were put into jail okay and living under this apartheid was not uh, comfortable what was not fair for black population for the black people they were forced to live in certain areas and they were not allowed to vote they were not allowed to travel in white areas or where or uh, where white people lived okay and there were many other problems as well black people and white people were not allowed to marry each other and not only blacks but asians or many other non white people were forced uh, out of their homes and they were asked to go back to their countries or their homelands and even the government also took over the schools and this system of apartheid was applicable even for white and black students even in schools there were sign boards which declared that some areas were for black children and some were for white 
so whoever black people broke the laws they were punished or put into jail so by the 1950s many groups there were many groups formed who protested against this apartheid system and these protests were called the defiance campaign these protests were called the defiance campaign and the most prominent of these groups was the african national congress or the anc and nelson mandela was one of the prominent leaders of the african national congress okay so this is how nelson mandela comes into the scene as a civil rights leader of south africa fine so he was born in uh, july 18 1918 in weso south africa and his birth name was roli lala he was a member of the timbu royalty and his father was a chief of the city of weso in fact he got his nickname uh, nelson from a teacher in school okay he attended school and later college at the college of fort hare and also attended the university of witwatersrand and it was at the witwatersrand that uh, mandela got his law degree so after his studies he became a leader in the african national congress he was very much inspired by uh, gandhi's non violence approach and initially he asked the protesters to follow this non violent approach okay but later he weaned away from that approach but uh, after many protesters were killed by the police they began to take a more militaristic approach and nelson was arrested for his anti apartheid activism in 1962 and he was sent to prison and he spent the next 27 years in prison and during this time in prison he became a symbol of the people against apartheid and uh, in the 1980s governments around the world started to pressurize the south african government to end apartheid and many countries even stopped doing business with south africa because of this apartheid system so as the pressure and protests increased the government bre- began to relax some of the apartheid laws and apartheid finally came to an end in the early 1990s and uh, nelson mandela was released from prison in 1990 and in the very next year south african president frederick william d clark repealed uh, he called off the remaining apartheid laws and a new constitution was declared okay in 1994 a new election was held and in that election all people had equal right to vote irrespective of color creed gender etc all people could vote and in that 1994 election the african national congress won the election and nelson mandela became the president of south africa he was awarded uh the nobel peace prize in 1993 and this legendary leader 
died in December 5th, 2013 in Johannesburg, South Africa. And in uh, even now, July 18th is considered uh, or it is regarded as Nelson Mandela Day. And uh, people are asked to devote 67 minutes to help other people okay people are asked to devote 67 minutes to help other people and the 67 minutes represent the 67 years Mandela spent serving his country and then his wife is Winnie Mandela and he had six children and 20 grandchildren so that is the biography of Mandela and in the documentary also we see similar sketches uh, about this great hero Nelson Mandela. This documentary by Peter Davis titled Nelson Mandela from Present to President is a moving and intimate portrayal of Nelson Mandela and it is filmed on the campaign trail in the days leading up to South Africa's first democratic election. So I told you about the 1994 election in which uh, African National Congress won and Mandela became the president. So just before the election, the campaign was going on. The first footage is uh, taken from, uh, taken during the election campaign uh, that happened in January 1994. And we see Nelson Mandela attending a party congress. He seems so happy, relaxed, and he is adored by his party followers and he joins in that gathering, in that celebration, music. He is looking very calm, dignified, and he seems to be the, he is the undisputed leader of the African National Congress. So even though he seems very calm and composed, we know that he has endured so many hardships. He was imprisoned for 27 years uh, and he was uh, physically, morally tortured by many South African governments. But he was a great soul who showed no bitterness to anybody. And we see a wonderful testimony by Desmond Tutu, uh, who was the Archbishop of Cape Town. Not only that, Desmond Tutu was also a close friend of Nelson Mandela in the uh, struggle against Apartheid, he was a very close companion of Mandela uh, and uh, Tutu was also awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984 for his non-violent struggle against Apartheid. We see Desmond Tutu uh, saying that prison can do uh, one of two things to people. It can either make you harder and more bitter or it can make you stronger and uh, more compassionate. And Tutu says that that's what happened to Nelson Mandela. He became more stronger and more compassionate. So this is a very famous testimonial uh, about uh, Nelson Mandela by Desmond Tutu. Tutu adds that uh, the moment you realize that you are ready to serve other people or 
even more you are even ready to die for it or you are ready to sacrifice your life for others then a special chemistry happens between the body and the soul okay this was what happened for mandela as well he was ready to sacrifice his life to serve the people okay and he did that with his body and his mind next uh, we come across the words of cheryl carolus who is a south african politician she was a student leader teacher activist and she was uh, one of the founders of the united democratic front or the udf and the united women's organization uwo she was also the national executive of the african national congress she was also actively involved and associated with mandela in the anti apartheid movement so here uh, we we see uh, cheryl carolus uh, talking about the wisdom and principled leadership of mandela and this is what she says i quote he is probably the one leading the world whose morality and leadership is completely unquestioned in a context where you find that the whole world is in some state of upheaval and change south africa is the one country where the change is very positive and a lot of that change is symbolized through nelson mandela unquote nelson mandela was separated from his family for nearly 3 decades in an apartheid prison and so he endured a long history of separation in his private life even though he was a man with a golden heart and he was able to forgive those who tormented him or those who kept him in prison but his family found it very difficult to forgive those tormentors and here you see his daughter sinsi mandela talking about the loss she experienced when her father was imprisoned for a long period she says even after years she is not able to forget or forgive what the government and the government policies has done uh, to her and her family and you see mandela had to sacrifice everything for the sake of the struggle against apartheid including his family for instance mandela's daughter uh, zinsi mandela she was 1 year old when her father was arrested and uh, he was imprisoned at robben island and uh, he remained there for 27 years and during mandela's imprisonment sinsi was subjected to years of harassment and abuse by the ruling apartheid government and during her youth she was often left in the care of her older sister zanani mandela when her mother also was imprisoned for months she was the youngest and third of nelson mandela's three daughters she had later served as south african diplomat poet author 
anti apartheid activist etc so here in this documentary we get to know about the loss that she experienced uh, during her childhood when her parents especially her father was not there to support her when she needed him the most so we will just look at the words of zinzi mandela the daughter of nelson mandela this is a quote quote i don't think we will fully recover from the consequences of what they have done i have been deprived of a father i have been deprived of a childhood and i don't think i will be able to recapture that he is back now and he tries his best to be the ideal father but there is so much of rediscovery that we have to do with one another so these are the words of his daughter winnie mandela was the second wife of nelson mandela she has also uh, served as the member of parliament and she was a very prominent south african anti apartheid activist and politician as well she also served as the deputy minister of arts and culture uh, in south africa nelson and winnie had been married for 38 years and it is during this period that uh mandela spent 27 years in prison and while he was imprisoned winnie mandela became his public face okay he be- she became his public face during the 27 years he spent in jail and during that period she rose to prominence within the domestic anti apartheid movement and she had to endure many tortures many trials and tribulations she was detained by the government services on various occasions she was tortured subjected to many banning orders she was banished from their town and she had to spend several months in solitary confinement but uh, she received severe criticism uh, when slowly she started to exert a reign of terror or she started using violence and uh, it is said that several human rights abuses were also charged uh, in the name of winni mandela and then in 1992 the couple got divorced mandela was released from prison on 1990 and the couple separated in 1992 and in the documentary we see desmond tutu reflecting that mandela loved winni so deeply but then desmond tutu he also adds that mandela was a lonely man even though he returns to his huge house with lots of children and grandchildren he lives lonely for winni mandela it was always not very easy uh, to live in such circumstances uh, and to take care of her very young children for mandela politics came first and he spent little time with his family now as already mentioned It was in 1963 that he was sentenced to life imprisonment and he was released only in 1990 so all these years she had to take care of her children all alone and at the same time 
fight against the injustice that was happening uh, to her home to her community to her tribe as well as her nation next let's see why did mandela go to prison mandela went to prison because he opposed south africa's apartheid laws and these apartheid laws separated south africans into different racial categories and the dominant category was the white or the european the other categories or the inferior categories were the blacks the other colored people of mixed race or the indians or asians and the irony is that only 15% of the south african population constituted the white people over 80% of the population were the black south africans or the people belonging to the mixed race or the asians but the 15% of the population that was the white people they had the power and wealth they stood at the top of the society the other 80% the blacks they were relegated to the very bottom so there was widespread campaigns strikes and boycotts uh, against apartheid and nelson mandela joined this struggle in the 1940s as a young lawyer and by the 1950s he had become an important leader in the struggle against apartheid however the south african government of that period they responded to the demand for equality and freedom through violence and repression so whoever joined this anti apartheid struggle they were shot or killed or detained or even arrested by the government so initially this anti apartheid movement started off very peacefully mandela and his followers they believed in the principle of non violence so they adopted non violent methods like civil disobedience uh, to fight against this system of apartheid but later mandela realized that armed struggle militant struggle or using weapons that was the only way forward so he and his followers formed an armed resistance group called the umkondo wesiswe which which means uh, the spear of the nation and mandela spent 17 months underground trying to gain support for the armed struggle but he was arrested in 1962 in 1963 mandela was put on trial for a number of charges and this happened during the famous rivonia trial the rivonia trial was a trial that took place in south africa between 1963 and 1964 many leaders of the african national congress including nelson mandela they were arrested and tried for or they were accused of 
221 acts of sabotage sabotage meaning the act of deliberately destroying or damaging something okay so mandela and his followers were accused of 221 acts of sabotage against the south african government and after the trial he and his colleagues were sentenced to life imprisonment and mandela and his compatriots were sent to a maximum security prison in robben island okay and in that prison there were no white prisoners and mandela spent 18 to 27 years of imprisonment there there were other political prisoners uh, also in that prison and uh, on robben island he had to face harsh conditions basic human rights were denied to them they were given very poor food they were forced to wear shorts and sandals even in winter they were condemned to hard labor and uh, many prisoners were assaulted and tortured by guards and contact with the outside world was almost completely severed and when mandela arrived on roman island he was permitted to write one letter and one half an hour visit every 6 months he was even denied permission to attend the funeral of his mother and one of his sons also died uh in a car accident during the period of his imprisonment his two daughters zeni and zinsi had to wait until the age of 16 to see him and in the prison glass wall separated prisoners from visitors and they talked on phones as guards listened to every word letters were heavily censored while in prison also mandela and other prisoners uh advocated for improving the conditions and rights of all prisoners regardless of race and in 1966 black prisoners secured the right to wear long pants instead of shorts and eventually prisoners were also allowed to have a table in their cells to read and study they even planted small gardens they got the right to play soccer tennis and volleyball in prison summer games were held in the prison music was introduced music became another way in which prisoners uh, express their talents they start started organizing small events and while he was in prison south africans continued to resist the apartheid uh, system and in 1985 under increased pressure the south african government made an offer to release mandela but they had a condition they uh, put forth the condition that he should renounce violence as a political tool but mandela rejected the offer Mandela was committed to achieving freedom for all South Africans not just for himself. And then in 1986 he began to quietly reach out to the South African government and he started negotiations with the government to end apartheid. 4 years later in 1990 the most famous political prisoner in the world nelson mandela was released he was 71 years old then 
Then in 1993, South Africa adopted an interim constitution and this paved the way for the country's first democratic elections. In 1994, the first democratic elections took place and Mandela was elected the president of South Africa. He had dedicated the remaining years of his life to transforming his country and he always acknowledged that there was still more to do and that was that it was up to the future generations to continue the struggle for freedom. 